Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we're going to be showing you how to find candidates that are hard to source. Companies typically pay recruitment agencies big fees for these type of candidates. We're going to be going through it. We're going to be showing you the methods and I'll also give you some tips along the way as to what you should be doing in terms of workflow, how you should be looking at the profiles, what to look for, and also looking at the companies they've worked for to see if they, you can solicit some business from them as well. So... Without further ado, my LinkedIn page, I've been banned all over the place, but I've got a new LinkedIn page, so connect with me. Link is in the description below if you want to have a chat. So let's go with, I don't know, Architects for now. And if I can spell. God. Yeah, let it correct me. And we're going to go with, let's say London for now just to narrow it down. And what this does, it does a Boolean string search. And this works better actually, in my opinion, than LinkedIn Recruiter or anything else. And if we go over and we just have a look at a few candidates here, open up these profiles. Now you may want to narrow the search down. You may want to even put open to new here, for example. Less will come up. So we are open to new concepts. It doesn't always pick up. We're always open to new challenges. I don't know. Let's have a look at the profile and let's see. And we can go from here. So have a look at the candidate's profile. Now, the thing you want to obviously look for, first of all, or I do, I would advise to do, would be look at their profile, their history, work history. Now, the other thing is connection reliant. You've only got a certain amount per day. So you may want to connect with this candidate. However, if their profile looks very inactive or they've just made it and they've never used it again, chances are not, you're going to waste a connection request and you're limited in that respect, especially if you've got positions you're recruiting for. However, I would advise doing this method way before you actually start your agency so you can build up your network. So if you end up connecting with 500 account, um, sorry, architects, you can do pretty well with that. So uh, fair enough. This person's profile to me, I'm not an architect recruiter, looks absolutely fantastic, in fact. Yeah. Apart from maybe that might be a little short, they'll be asking why you want to leave if you've stayed there for a year and a year. But she seems spot on. And I would say she's an excellent candidate, in fact. So go ahead and connect, etc. Let's look at another one. This one is the same thing. Looks like a good, I don't know what the difference between a project architect is and a normal architect, but... She looks like she's got the necessary skill sets. Um, this profile doesn't have a picture. They've got 500 connects. Um, you know, what I'd be looking to do as well is I'll be looking to see what companies they work for. Now, what this has in this gentleman's location, preferably he has, uh, there's going to be other architects in here. Yeah. So you can find an abundance of candidates. So you ain't got to go through, you know, opening up all these tabs here. Actually, I should say architect, architect. Now what this will do is it will show me all the architects. So they've got a lot working for them and not necessarily, you know, these are the people on the market, but you can connect with all of these as well. On the flip side, this company could also be a potential client as well. So you can type in HR recruitment. So director of people. Um, I would tend to go to the resourcing manager. Um, typically, if we click over to her profile, she's probably saying something about efficiency or well, she hasn't written anything. But it's usually like she doesn't her, her position isn't solely to recruit. It's also to do, you know, HR policies and strategy development, whatever that is, whatnot. So again, we're looking at candidates and all these CVs. I mean, all these profiles look fantastic, in my opinion. And it could be something that you could be searching for with it um, as well. But again, architects are quite hard to place, but the fees you'll be charging 15%. Someone could be on a 50, 60, 80K salary on a senior position, maybe. Um, you could get a very good fee off that. You know, you're, you're looking at a 10 to 20 range in terms of payment fees. So it can be pretty good. Now, is it laborious to go through um, 200,000? I don't think there's 200,000 uh, positions. Now, the other thing I want you to look at is if there are this many architects in the UK, yeah, what? How many jobs are actually available? 
is another thing to look at. And how many agencies are looking at it? Have we picked a good number, a good niche? So again, what would I be doing in this situation? I think, personally, I know architecture, if you can get it right, you can make big, big money. Um, there's a contract market, there's the sort of assistant, trainee, uh, junior position you could also recruit for. Now, what would I be doing? So Pablo, again, he's got absolutely fantastic experience. I mean, he's, I might even start a, an architect agency because these candidates look like they're, as soon as you get their buy-in from them, you can then move on to sort of placing them. Now, you can't just go in there and bombard everyone with emails and then say, you have to kind of know the market. So let's say TT Architects, I don't know, obviously know them, but it's a small business. So I'm guessing he might actually own it. But it's let's say we know they don't pay as well as their neighbouring company nearby up the road. Chances are he might be swayed salary-wise. And it is about connecting. If you ever need me, for example, I would connect with him I'd later on, I'll send him a voice note. Pablo, fantastic experience. Just wanted to reach out to you. Thanks. Welcome to my network. If you're ever looking for a position in architecture, that's all I specialize in. Please get back to me. I'll be sh happy to share what we have available. All the best. Take care. That's it. You're just saying to him, if you ever need me, I'm here. That's the best way to approach candidates. Not, are you currently open to new opportunities? I've got this fantastic role. You just look like you're just using a program to send it out to everyone. It's no personal touch. If you're sending a voice note, it's a personal touch. Your profile looks fantastic. I can see you at TT Architects. Don't know if that's something you want to commit to long term, but if you're ever open to new opportunities, please hit me back up. Voice notes, voice notes, voice notes, voice notes, voice notes. Please send them. It converts very well. You get the buy-in from the candidate. They feel more loved. Me personally, I never check my emails or my spam emails from companies always emailing me these offers. If someone sent me a video personalized or uh, a, a voice note personalized, I'm more likely to listen to it. And also when it pops up, they don't know what it actually says. So they have to click it and listen. Otherwise, curiosity will end up killing them and they'll have to listen to it eventually. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a brief overview on how to search on LinkedIn, what to look for. I hope it's been of assistance. Again, some positions like uh, lower the salary, look for positions up 40,000 plus. They're more likely to be on LinkedIn, that as a general rule. Salaries uh, 40K and below, you're better off sourcing from a job board. Hope this helps. Love you all and take care.